Ooh, look, there's so many of them everywhere. And I'm not alone, am I? There's lots of YouTube people who've got books in their backgrounds. I've mentioned it before. But why? Why do you think that might be? Personally, I think it's because we like to surround ourselves with stories. No, you're not quite... Yeah, this is a new this is a new setup. I need to lower you a bit, I think. Let's try you there. How's that? Is that better? Hello. I think geek culture is about the desire to be surrounded by stories. Blah de blah de blah de blah. History of stories. Blah de blah de blah. Something to do with the human condition. Blah de blah de blah. But when it comes down to it, you know and I know that it's nice to have stories around it. I mean, look at all of these. These are these are story books. What you see around you. There, there aren't any factual books here. That's a lie. There are some factual books here, but I don't think you can see them. There's some down here. There's some stuff about ancient history down there, and there's some some stuff about words. I've got to eat shoots and leaves down there, and things like that. And then over here. Aha! This is a good one. Up here, you can't see them from where you are, so I shall bring them down. Disney War, which is a non-fiction book about things that happened at Disney. And Specky Nation, which is a book about different ZX Spectrum games. However, both of these books, and the ones about ancient history that we've got down there, they all tie in with the theme of stories. This is about people who told some of my favourite stories, and this is about some of the games through which I imagined my own stories, because they didn't really tell stories themselves in those days, but you imagined they did. We like games, we like comics, we like fictional novels, we like stories. We like to be told about places and people and stuff happening. And most importantly, we like to... I've got some CDs down here, as you can see, and even those are stories. I've got musicals and things down there. And even the ones that don't tell stories still tell stories about me and my life, because a lot of these are like old albums that I've always had for most of my life. Stories! It's all about stories! We all like stories, and we all like to feel like there's an unlimited number of stories still to come. Hence all of this. Hence why it looks... Hence why we get excited by seeing shell full of books. It's why we like the idea of Netflix, it's why we like the idea of Steam. They're just gonna keep coming, they're just gonna keep on coming and never end. And it's great, we don't want them to end. Imagine if all the stories ended! And yet, for all this excitement that I had about stories and taking them in, I was holding myself back from taking in stories. How was I doing that? Well, look at this, what have we got over here? We got uh, Asimov there, he's writing about some robots. Stephen Baxter all the way along there. There's more Stephen Baxter over there, actually. Hmm. Uh, uh, bit. Uh, uh, eh, eh. Stephen Baxter all the way along there, he's writing about space and time and origin and face, face. Dune! Dune, 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 that's space! Again, it's all science fiction! Look at all this, it's science fiction! Why have I only got science fiction? Science fiction. It's because I like... spaceship. Yeah, it's because I like spaceships, I think. And, well, that's all very well and good, isn't it? But just because you like one thing and then you read books about that thing... I mean, obviously, that's not what science fiction books are, but it's, it's a place to start and you kind of go, oh, one spaceship, and then you read a book and then more interesting things than that happen. But it's kind of one thing, it's one genre, right? And that's not good enough. If I'm trying to take in stories, why am I picking one thing to read stories about and then being surprised when they deviate from that? But that's essentially what I'm doing. I'm basically picking just one thing and reading about <laughs> but, aha, as any of you who happen to be regular viewers will know, that's not the whole story, is it? I don't just have science fiction books, because there is also dearly departed Mr. Pratchett. There he is, look. Would that there were more of him. I've been reading the Discworld series, and as many of you have pointed out, I've not been reading it quite enough, and well, I agree, and well, I'm gonna read more of it. But as I was reading it, as I mentioned to you before in one of my previous videos, while I was reading them, I started to feel this kind of, um, a sort of a semi-nostalgic sort of a, oh, this is what I want, this is what I've been looking for. Because in the Pratchett books, what I found was a writer who was delighting in writing stories, and not really focusing on how lofty or intellectual or worth reading, they, they happen to be, and instead just sort of sneaking that stuff in under the radar, because they trick you into thinking that you're reading something light and fun and just silly and throwaway. And then actually, you come out of the other end of the book a bit better than when you went in. Anyway, that, that's not what we're here to talk about today. It's difficult in these dark times not to gush about Terry Pratchett that got carried away, sorry. Instead, I want to talk about what that led me to realise about myself, which is that I don't read fantasy books. Why not? If what I'm looking for, as I claimed previously in my Discworld videos, is sort of unbound stories, stories not constrained to just talk about either, like, serious grown-up issues to do with you know, relationships, so there's literary fiction. I, maybe I don't know enough about literary fiction, but I, I suspect that the majority of it is about human relationships, which is, yes, an interesting thing, but, like, where's the wizard's... 
or space stuff, which I love, and I'll never stop reading science fiction books, I'll never stop that. And of course, as we know, science fiction books aren't about space stuff, they just use that as a way to sort of hook you in, and then, and then as with Pratchett, talk about serious things and sort of make you better by reading them. But, come on, let's be honest, you open the book because you want to see spaceships and time travel and stars and things. The ball of, of glowing desire to read stories in the heart of me has been there since I was very little and really hasn't changed. It wants to read stories the way I thought about stories when I was little, which is unbound! Like, any magical amazing thing can happen in them and they can be set anywhere. Anyway, I go into this in more detail in my Discworld video, so if you're interested in that, you can go and see it. I'll, I'll uh, There you are. There's, you can click that and go and see that. But the point is, what did I do about it? Well, here's what I did about it. I read realised that what I'm talking about is probably fantasy novels, isn't it? They're probably the sort of books where you, the, there's no rules about what they have to be about. I mean, I always sort of thought there probably were rules about what they had to be about. They probably had to be about sort of medieval warfare, and if they were about wizards, then they probably had to be about sort of, oh, but what if wizards were like medieval warfare wizards? In other words, I'd fallen, hook, line and sinker, for the marketing for things like Game of Thrones and Dragon Age, and for the sort of popular concept of what fantasy novels is, which is of course not going to be what it is, because everyone still thinks that science fiction novels are like flying saucers and hairdryer ray guns from the 1950s, and they're not. So what then? did fantasy novels have to offer me that I don't even know about? I've been through this question once before in my life when I was a teenager. Actually, I said to my mum, Mum, I've realised I haven't read a proper fantasy book, can you get me one? Because I was well aware that it is more effective to simply ask mum to find something than for me to go and try and find it myself, both in the wider world and around the house. But mum is good in bookshops in particular, she's always been a big reader, and so I sent her off, and back she came, presumably with something for herself as well, but for me, she got the first Pern book, which I never made it through, by the way, I didn't finish, I got about halfway through that and I never read any more, so if I should rectify that, then tell me down in the comments. And the other thing she got me was The Neverending Story! Oh! Oh, how dearly I love The Neverending Story, both film and book, and soundtrack, movie soundtrack, love it. Oh, and of course, because I knew the film. Oh, and Text Adventure, oh, the Spectrum Text Adventure, get the 128k music on. Oh, it's beautiful. that I've read that are sort of stealth fantasy. I mean, look, the, the, the Night Circus. Beautiful book. Oh, I love The Night Circus. Oh. Is that a fantasy book? It must be, mustn't it? Yeah, that's got to be a fantasy book. And there's Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. I've been, well, I've been reading that for flipping ages. I only got that far into it, but I didn't abandon it because I didn't like it. I loved it. Oh, I love it. I love it. But there's just so much of it. Ah. I'm going to read it, though. I'm going to read it. So that's a fantasy book. So fantasy books, but generally speaking, when I've read fantasy books or they've been in my life, I've not thought of them as fantasy books. I just thought, thought of them as books. But when I read science fiction, I'm deliberately reading science fiction. Science fiction. Robots spaceships. You know, I'll go to the science fiction bit in the bookshop, or sometimes I'll look up what the previous year's best science fiction books turned out to be, and I'll get them, because I know that good science fiction is something I'm gonna like. Well, surely good fantasy is something I'm gonna like, because I bet you it's the exact same thing, but with dragons and wizards, and they're cool! I bet you that in the same way that every science fiction fan knows full well, and will tell everybody within earshot, that science fiction isn't just about lasers and spaceships and stuff, but secretly likes those things, I bet fantasy is exactly the same. I bet it's not just about uh, magic and wizards and dragons. I bet I bet those things are in it, but I bet they're all metaphors for stuff, and it's all about the human condition stuff, because that's all, you could, all genres are that. We can't help write about that, because that's that's all we've got in us, and we just have to write it and stuff. So I thought, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go on Goodreads, and I'm going to go on just Google generally, and I'm going to find out what the best fantasy books of the previous year were. the list of ones that are the best, I'm going to find out which one is the fantasiest. So I wanted to find something that was well reviewed and well liked, but was also absolutely, for sure, a fantasy novel. Like almost, almost a cliché. Almost what I think of as a fantasy novel without really having read very many of them. And I wanted to delve into that and just be impressed by it. I wanted it to win me over. That's why I was looking for a really well reviewed one. And I was in luck. 
because one of the books that came out on top of this list, appearing quite consistently as a well-reviewed and well-loved book, was Book 2 of Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archive series, which by all accounts is absolutely a fantasy tome. This is a writer who's been working in the fantasy genre for really quite a while now, who of course has had a hand in the Wheel of Time series, about which I know nothing. That's for in the future. I've since found out there's flipping millions of those books and they're all really long, so it's going to take me a while to get around to that, I think. But anyway. And it seems that after putting in all that hard work, Brandon was finally given the opportunity to know, for really real, seriously write, a proper epic fantasy series. Like, a big one. Like a big one that he can always put on his shelf and say, that's my big one! Just flump it down on his shelf. There's my big one. And so, to that end I ordered it, and here it is! The first, no don't worry I didn't go for the second book, the first in the series, The Way of Kings. Now here in the UK, this isn't the UK edition of the book, in the UK it's split in two, because it's just so big! But I wasn't having any of that. Like, the whole point was I wanted to get into a big, fat, just stupidly long fantasy book that's a proper, big, stupidly long fantasy thing. So I needed the one that seemed the biggest and stupidly longest. Which I suppose is perhaps the hardback, but I, I like paperbacks, I find them more comfortable to hold. I mean, look how excited I was when this huge book first arrived. I made a video the day it arrived, you see, and it goes like this. Look at the size of that. I am excited. I was having a look at this. Goodness knows if I'll get through this, but just the fact that it's a big book excites me. And I think when you're excited about a book, that's it's time to delve into that book. I'm excited by any book that's thick enough that you can write the name of the book and its author horizontally on the spine. That's how you know you've got a nice big fat book. I am recording this uh, late at night um, because I know I'm not going to make it through tomorrow without starting to read this book. And it's going to take me most of the rest of my life. You know, look at it. That, it's, it, it, it's enormous. See how excited I was? But also, I had this feeling that was like, ah, if I read this book, it's going to take me so long that by the time I get to the end, I'm not going to remember anything about the beginning of it, and I'm not really going to have very much to say about it other than I liked it, or whatever, or I hated it. I don't know. Maybe I would hate it. So I came up with an idea. I'm not just going to read this book and then do a review about it. I am going to do that, but I'm going to go a step further. You and me are going to go, if you will join me on this, on this quest, on this, because we're being fantasy, so it's a quest. If you will join me on this quest, I am going to go through this book a chapter at a time, and I'm going to report back to you on each chapter. And as you can see, it's going to be quite a journey we're going to be going on. The book appears to have 75 chapters, and that's not including prologues and interludes and things. So that's um, going to be a lot of videos. I'm going to be spamming my channel with videos if I do it that way, but I want to do it that way. It's my channel, damn it, but I thought that just for the sake of people who aren't into that, perhaps I ought to start a dedicated channel just for that sort of thing. My intention is that I'm going to create a second channel just for this sort of of thing, and I'm going to call it Bulmer's Bookshelf, obviously, and in it you will find all of the individual chapters that I've gone through for this and any future books that I do the same thing with. Bulmer's Bookshelf, in the meantime, will not be leaving this channel altogether. I plan to do the first few chapters here on the main channel just because, well, I'm worried that nobody will know about the other channel and won't go and look at it. And I think that whenever I finish a book, I'll do the sort of final wrap-up review video here on the main channel. But if what you really want, if the main thing you like about my channel is when I talk about books, then you can go and subscribe to Bulmer's Bookshelf. I will put a link over there. There's a link to Bulma's bookshelf, a load of old bubbins. And we're gonna go and read a big fancy book together. Isn't this going to be fun? Isn't it going to be fun? I'll make a playlist, so oh, theoretically it ought to automatically go from this to the next video, so just sort of stay tuned. And uh, otherwise, if you're not interested in that, then do please join me at the end of it when I wrap up how the whole book was. And there we are. So you are all cordially invited to join me on this quest. Let's see, let's see what we find in the world of the Stormlight Archive.